Two weeks ago, my sim racing setup slash OC Racing HQ was at the top of its game. And then we fast forward to today and... Okay, so I, I can explain. So you see, I've, I've been busy. First off, with other videos. For example, my review on the SF1000 rim and other stuff which are downstairs. The Thrustmaster Ferrari SF1000. The Thrustmaster T128. Making those reviews require me to constantly change the gear I'm using, and so... The reason I have no wheelbase right now is because when I reviewed the Fanatec Club Sport Shifter, I needed to plug that in directly onto a Fanatec wheelbase, and I didn't want to do my review on this setup, so I needed to bring everything back downstairs, and so, long story short, it's all messed up. <laughs> Finally, I'm also a full-time student. Well, you see, when you're in college and you're busy with school and stuff, the last thing you really care about is maintaining your room clean. So my attention has been dedicated to figuring out what these numbers mean for schoolwork rather than, well, rather than all of that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, if you've been following this iRacing series, you will know that I just graduated from the rookie class, which means it's now time to choose a new series to race in. But first, it's time to get all of this sorted, and with regards to that desk, I'll figure that out eventually. So, nothing has yet been figured out, but anyway. Okay, um, I guess the only change is that I'm now using the Moza SRP pedals rather than the Fanatec ones, and that's only because I'm currently testing these out for a future review. It's time to choose a wheelbase. Now, originally, I really wanted to use this SF1000 rim with iRacing, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna put a Thrustmaster wheelbase on it. The problem is, well, this one I'm giving away, so I don't really wanna use it. And then this one, it's one of like the biggest wheelbases you will ever see in terms of both height and length, and and it will not fit between the wheel deck and the monitor. Now I could theoretically lift all of this up, but it's too much work for what it is. So instead I'm gonna go downstairs, choose a wheelbase to put on here, and then get everything plugged in so I can finally get to racing. So let's do that now. So thanks to this whole YouTube thing, I am fortunate enough to have quite a bit of options. The R16 is a little bit overkill just to use upstairs, so I'm not going to use that one. I think since I used the Fanatec wheelbase for all the MX-5 videos, I'll go with the R16 for this new chapter of sorts. Actually, no I won't. I just remembered that this one will work on consoles, so never mind. I forgot to mention the fact that my room smells like chicken because I had the genius idea of eating fried chicken up here a few days ago and I, let's just say I regretted it. But anyway, it's time for my least favorite part of anything sim racing related and that is mounting all the hardware and doing some cable management. So let's do that now. One of the most incredible things about this whole sim racing hobby is how many Allen keys you have yet how few of them you can actually find. Like I think I spend more time looking for the Allen keys themselves rather than, no this isn't it, rather than actually you know tightening stuff. Now of course some of you guys know where this is going. What are you doing? Okay so everything's plugged in, it's ready to go I think, or at least it's ready to be tested, but my dad said I need to go somewhere with him so we're gonna cut forward some three hours from now. It may or may not be a completely different day. <laughs> I've been busy, guys. I swear I've been busy, okay? Um, so with regards to the setup, I... That's embarrassing. With regards to the setup, I plugged everything in, and now it's time to turn everything on and see if it works. It's been so long since I've played iRacing that my computer's taking years to... Oh. Of course, now that I take out the camera. <laughs> Connecting to iRacing. Okay, so since the last time I played iRacing, I graduated from the MX-5 Cup, and now it's time to choose a new league. Now, I received hundreds of comments with different recommendations, but the one that stood out the most and caught my attention was the GT4 League. Now, future me will explain exactly why, so take it away. 
Thanks past me. Now, you see, about a month ago, Six Sigma Sim Racing flew me out to Canada to take their Porsche Cayman GT4 out on track, which means I actually drove a GT4. Now, since that was such a crazy experience, I want to relive it in iRacing. Now, of course, I've reached the portion of iRacing where everything I want to do, I need to pay for. The good news is that I already have the Cayman GT4, so the only thing I need to pay for is the track, and then I should be good to go for at least this week. <laughs> I don't think I've even ever heard of this track. Okay, so I just bought and downloaded everything. Of course, I haven't even done one practice lap and I'm already gonna register for the race because that's all I'm here for. So it's gonna start at 8.30 and it is currently 7.46, which means I have about 40 minutes to figure everything out and then I'll see you guys on track. Now you guys already know, nothing ever goes around as planned when it comes to me and iRacing. Update, we have devastating news. So I mentioned how I'm using new pedals, right? So I go to bind them on iRacing, the throttle's all good, press the brake fully and depress it. It's not recognized. And then if I press the clutch, the clutch is recognized. So the throttle and the clutch is recognized, but the brake is not. Oh God. Now the reason is probably because I plugged something in incorrectly because all three pedals plug in differently into the control box. So I have two options. I could remove it all now and try to fix it, but the race starts in half an hour, or I could leave this for a problem for future me. The thing is I kind of allocated this time to do this race. So I have no other option but to figure it out right now. And by figure it out, I mean, I need help with the pedals again. Why would you register for a race with a car you have never even tried? I don't know, okay? Doesn't it smell like chicken in here? Probably because you brought a bunch of fried chicken up here. <laughs> so, under pressure, my pit crew, aka my brother, was tasked with fixing the puddles. Please put lights instead of- We don't have lights in here, okay? I have stupid lamp. Take it or leave it. Use your phone! Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> tell me when you're ready to test, and I'll tell you when to press. You can just press it with your hand. Okay, you can press. It's the middle one, right? Yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. At this point, we got the brake to work, and all was good and ready to go, except... How do you manage to fix one and then ruin the other one? <laughs> was it working before? Yeah, it was working before. I told you to test them and you were like, it's good. Well, I figured you didn't disconnect anything. <laughs> idiots. I'm supposed to be doing stuff for class. Yeah, well, so am I. <laughs> so why is it not working? I don't know. That's, that's your problem. It's connected in the right place. Therefore, continuing to disconnect them and reconnect them isn't going to help. No, don't put it back. Why are you tightening? They don't, if they don't work, I need to remove them and put some different pedals. I want to miss the race anyway. No, just race with this one. Just don't use the clutch. Oh, true. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I forgot this car doesn't need that. Very long story short, I made do with just a brake and throttle, and I even managed to squeeze in a few practice laps. But, of course... So if this hasn't been chaotic enough, it's 8.13. The race is supposed to start in 15 minutes, right? So I click on GT4, purchase required. You need to purchase Sebring International Raceway. Did I not just buy a track like 20 minutes ago? Are you telling me that I have it on video? How are you gonna tell me that now it's a different track? It's been 20 minutes. There's no way, there's no way. It's the same one. You need to purchase Sebring. So what did I just buy? Why is it suddenly Sebring? What, what did I just spend 10 minutes practicing on? Okay, granted it was only 10 minutes, but for me that's a lot, okay? Time is precious around here. So you're telling me I bought the wrong track? Uh, yeah. What is going on? I mean, I might as well, right? Just, I spent $30 on tracks. Okay, so all of that later, now I can actually register. So I have no idea why I bought the other track or why it showed that before, but I just bought a completely unnecessary track for $15. That's like two whole Chipotle bowls. 
$30 down, a malfunctioning pedal set, and a grand total of zero practice laps later, it was time to get on track for quality. And as you can imagine, well... So after roleplaying Latifi, it was time to get onto the race, and I was starting last if you couldn't have guessed. Boy. I should mention that with basically zero practice and using a car which is just a tad more powerful than the MX-5, I wasn't really trying to get a good result here. I was more, well, driving to survive. Midway through the first lap, things started to get a little bit feisty between the pink Mercedes and myself as we constantly found ourselves side by side. Because of this good battle, I think my confidence skyrocketed because I forgot that I don't actually know this track very well, and before I knew it, I did the exact same thing I did in my first quality lap. Now, since I did gain several positions throughout the first lap, I still wasn't last, and although it was frustrating to see so much progress get lost in the blink of an eye, I had no option but to get my head down and at least try to finish the race. Let's just say, today wasn't my day. Psych! That's the wrong number! Oh! Fast forward many laps later, the pink Mercedes somehow reappeared behind me, and after a good few minutes of hard racing, he did eventually pass, and around a lap or two later, so did the Aston behind. After that, however, not much really happened, and I was able to bring it back home with little to no damage, but an underwhelming performance on track. And this was further re-emphasized with a slight increase in safety rating, but bigger overall drop in I rating, something which I wasn't at all surprised when I saw. Overall, however, I like the competitiveness of these GT4 cars, but it won't be until I'm able to set aside ample time to practice before I start challenging for wins, something which I will definitely keep in mind for next time. And with that, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.